Hey everybody, how you doing? Shula Ruler here. Thanks for joining me. What I want to take a look at in this video is different scenarios of three-way switching. Something that can be a little bit confusing if you're not really sure what you're looking at. So we're going to look at a couple of different scenarios, a couple of different wiring methods for three-way switching, uh, as well as take a look at the kind of schematic wiring method that you would see for three-way switching as well. So hopefully it'll help you sort out some issues that you might be having with three-way switching. Um, so just a couple of examples where you might encounter three-way switching. Usually the most common application is one switch at the bottom of a set of stairs and one at the top that control the same light fixture. Another place you might see them is maybe in a long hallway where one switch at one end of the hallway controls the same light as the other switch at the other end of the hallway. Um, also kitchens, I've seen three-way switches in kitchens is a fairly common application as well. In the next video we'll add another switch in here that we call a four-way switch, but primarily we'll just talk about the three-way switching in this video. So if we take a look at what we've got here, we have one switch, our second switch, and then we've got our light fixture in the center here. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the drywall and the switch plates off and take a look at what's behind here. Okay, so this is just kind of a quick representation of what you might see. Um, obviously we have our electrical panel over here and then we'd have our wiring method that goes out to our first switch box. From there it goes out to our second switch box and then from our switch box it goes up to our actual light fixture itself. So uh, let's kind of run through what happens. Now if you've ever used a three-way switch you know that both, both will mysteriously somehow control the same light fixture. So if we kind of flick that one on, we can, well, I don't even want to call it on. We just flick it into the up position. We can go to the other switch, put it to the up position, and it turns the light on. Then we go back to our original switch, we put it down, and it turns the light back on. And we put this one to the down position, and it turns the light back off. Now, there is no real on or off position with a three-way switch. What we actually have inside a three-way switch is if we break this down into a wiring diagram, what we're actually looking at right here, we have a common terminal, and then we have our brass terminals that we call our travelers. Okay, so if you look at what's actually happening inside this switch here, we've got our hot conductor, our line conductor, coming out to our common terminal. From there, we have this paddle here, which basically we can put it into either this position or this position. That's basically all the three-way switch does. There's no on or off. All we're doing is either establishing this set of contacts and then when we flip the switch to the other position, we're going to break this set of contacts tax, and establish this set of contacts here. Okay, so we'll go back to our original position. If we kind of look at what's happening here with this switch, I'll try to highlight the path for current as we kind of flow from our panel here. So we kind of make our way down along here, up through this paddle, up across our red traveler here, where we end at this second traveler here. Now there's no path for current through to our light bulb right now, so we're not actually going to get any current flow through there. However, if we take a look at what happens after we flip this to the next position, now we can actually see that if I highlight again this path for current, get the highlighter work here, there we go, if I highlight this path for current, now we can see I have an established path to my light bulb back through my identified conductor, through my splice and my wire connector, back up through into my panel. We're inside, it would complete that connection and we would have a closed circuit, which tells me that we're going to have our light bulb on at this point. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Now what happens if we flick this over to the next position? So we're going to leave this in the down position. We're going to move to our second switch here, and we're going to flick our second switch into the up position. Immediately, the first thing you notice is that path for current along here is interrupted again. And if I have an open circuit, that means that my load is going to be de-energized, or my light bulb will be off. Okay, so again, we're going to go back over to here. We're going to flick this back into the original or the up position, and the difference now is both switches are in the up position, which means that we have an established path for current back to my supply, okay, which means that my load is energized or my light bulb is on. Okay, So the next thing I want to take a look at is an alternative wiring method that you might encounter as well. 
Okay? So exact same scenario, we still have our two switches and both switches still control the same load, our light bulb. Okay? But if we pull the drywall off, we can see this one's wired a little bit differently. Previously, it went from our panel to our first switch box and then from our switch box it went over to our second switch box. This one's wired from our first switch box up to our light octagon box and then from our light octagon box it goes down to our second switch. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. We're going to take a look at what happens here. It'll still work the exact same way. Obviously, if I flip this one up, the light comes on. Flip this one up, light goes off. If I flip this one back on, down, the light comes back on. And if I flip this one back down, the light goes off. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is wired internally. So with the same kind of a wiring diagram, it's a little crazier this time. But let's look at what happens with this path for current. So I'll go back onto the highlighter here. Okay, and if we follow that path for current, right now, it's coming up, goes up through our traveler, okay, and from our traveler, once we hit the traveler on that second switch, that path for current is broken, because if I follow this back to my light, there's no complete circuit here, so our light should be de-energized. Okay, now if we switch this over to there we go we switch that over to there if we follow our path for current now we can see down through here and you'll notice here where it's actually spliced onto a white conductor okay so that's a little bit different this can be kind of confusing if you open up a box like this one of the rules that we have generally speaking or um, generally speaking or a rule of thumb is down to a switch we will usually say down on the white back on the black what we're talking about when we say that is this black wire over here, we call this our switch leg. Okay, The wire or the conductor that's in between your last switching device and your load is called the switch leg. Okay, Out to our first switch, that's just our line conductor. And any conductor in between two switching configurations or three switching configurations, if you've got three ways or four ways, we call the conductors in between switches travelers. Okay, So let's follow along here again. So if we follow the little eraser here, it's going to come from our line through our first three-way switch. It's going to come down our traveler, okay, where we've got it spliced inside our wire connector. It's going to continue on this white conductor, which is a traveler at this point, okay, through this paddle, okay, to our black common screw, and it's going to come back to our light on our actual switch leg. Okay, and it goes back on our identified conductor, or our neutral conductor, we can call it too, back to our panel where it would complete the path and we should see the light on. Okay, if we go to our second switch over here, flip it to the up position. If we try to follow that path for current again, down through here, again through the same traveler, back to this position, and again, we have a break in our circuit, which means our light should be off. Okay, we go back to our original switch, flip it back to the up position, and what we see is that established path for current. Yet again, now we're coming through on our red traveler, back to our light on the switch leg, from the light, back through to the panel on our identified, okay, and that completes the circuit as well. Okay, so hopefully this has kind of helped clear up some of the issues with three-way switching. It can be a confusing topic, especially if you're not 100% sure what you're looking at. Uh, but again, hopefully this has helped. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.